Hi and welcome to today's video where we will be learning the TAL UNO LX version 2 VST synth in under 10 minutes. This VST synth is a Roland Juno 60 emulation plugin made by Togu Audio Line and does an amazing job of recreating those classic analog sounds considering how cheap it is. This is not a synthesis lesson, this video is just an overview of the sections of the synth and a quick start guide for people already comfortable with making sounds on synthesizers. The interface is nicely organised into four sections. We have the red sections where the sound is created and modulated. We have the blue sections where MIDI is controlled. The white sections for global control. And an orange section for portamento. Starting at the top, we have a drop down menu where we can load, save, and rename presets as well as accessing various banks. We can also use the left and right buttons to scroll through the patches. On the left of that, we have a service control window where we can make sure that the various voices of our sound are in tune. Very useful for large detuned saws, for example. Starting on the red synth section, first we have the digitally controlled oscillator tab. We can toggle on or off our three oscillators our pulse wave, saw wave, and our sub square wave. The sub oscillator is one octave lower than the rest. On the right of those, we can control the volume level of the sub oscillator, as well as a noise generator. On the left, we have an LFO slider in control of the amount of pitch oscillation. Then on the right of that, we have a pulse width modulation slider of the pulse wave oscillator, which can be given via the selector. We can either control it via the LFO manually or the envelope. In the filter section, we have the HPF high pass filter to remove all the unwanted low frequencies and the VCF voltage controlled filter, which is meant to be a true low pass filter with cutoff and resonance sliders, which can be used manually or controlled by the ADSR envelope in a direct or inverted way set by the dedicated switch where the envelope is in control of the intensity of the ADSR action, the mod controls the LFO action depth in oscillating the cutoff, and finally the key B, which at its maximum value gives the possibility to play the sounds generated by the VST at full resonance. Moving on, we have a VCA, voltage controlled amplifier switch, that allows us to choose if the volume of our sound will be affected by the following ADSR amp envelope parameters, or if not in gate mode. On the right, we have an LFO section where we can send the desired amount of oscillation rate to rhythmically influence the correlated parameters of the synth. Its fade in time is controlled with the delay time slider and nature of the trigger mode. We have three options to control LFO rate, key following, free mode, and host tempo synchronized mode with several quantizations. The LFO has four ways for you to choose from, triangle, sine, saw, random, and rectangle, and all can be set to direct or inverted states. Finally, the chorus section is really what makes this synth sound so amazing and warm. Uh, with its very simple three switchable modes, we have one, two, and of course, one and two both selected. Moving on to the blue MIDI section of the synth, we have a control section where we can set up what will be influenced by our pitch wheel with the freedom to operate on the Bender DCO affecting the pitch, as well as the Bender filter affecting the cutoff. We can also set what will be influenced by our key velocities operating on the velocity envelope, which gives the amount of filtering and the velocity volume, which operates on our keys velocity, obviously, and depending on how hard we physically press our keys. On the right, we have the arpeggiator, which can be MIDI synchronized. Uh, we can select free or in sync up to three octaves of range, up, down, and up, down functions, uh, host sync with several quantization choices, the hold option uh, that keeps our notes played as long as we're not playing a new key, and the very useful keep, which maintains our arpeggiator settings even when we switch between the patches, which is a really cool feature. The EXT16 button is only active when sync is enabled, and it allows syncing the arpeggiator with note on events played on MIDI channel 16. Next, let's take a look at the white global section of the synth. 
the master section here consists of a master volume slider and a master tune slider, as well as a switch to transpose the sound up and down octaves. The control section is where we can transpose our sound and configure the polyphony up to 12 voices and we can configure MIDI Learn, which is available for every parameter of the synth, and a panic button, which stops all current MIDI data, and a LFO trigger button, which works coupled with the manual option available in the LFO section that we previously looked at. And last but not least, we have the orange section, a cute portamento segment, uh, where we can activate the, the portamento with its related options, as well as a new polyphonic button, which was released in a recent update. And yeah, that is every part of the Tal you know, LX version 2 VST synth. And hopefully now uh, you feel a little more comfortable with creating sounds in this thing. Uh, please leave a comment on this video if you've enjoyed it and tell me if you'd like to see me cover more VSTs. I may also be uploading some sound design tutorials on this synth as well as others. So subscribe and turn on notifications so you can look out for those in the future. Uh, but for now, thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.